So, um, so I'll talk to you mostly about uh, success and failures in games, or in general, and the theories we come up with to explain these events in our lives. Um, so success and failure are experiences we have in all parts of our lives. Uh, most of us in this room have probably experienced uh, the rejection of a paper. Um, and it's a very interesting bouquet of emotions we go through when that happens. Um, so um, most authors ask themselves implicitly or explicitly, why is this happening? Why is this happening? And to answer this question, we generate uh, reasons. We, we construct a narrative, and we decide on a cause for this rejection. So maybe reviewer number two clearly didn't even read the paper. Uh, or maybe the review system is obviously fundamentally flawed. Or maybe my writing just wasn't good enough. Or maybe my contribution in the paper isn't even big enough. Or maybe I don't have what it takes to be a successful researcher. So uh, we assign causes to events in our lives to help us understand what happened and to predict future events. And in psychology, this process is called attribution, as we've already heard. And uh, what research on attribution suggests is that the causes we attribute to events affect us, our emotions and our motivational outcomes. So how threatened is my self-esteem by a rejected paper? Or how motivated am I to make improvements on the paper for the next submission? These are outcomes that are determined by how I attribute this rejection. And attribution also happens in games. Players generate elaborate theories as to why they won or lost a game. So I found this uh, online. This is the League of Legends defeat bingo. Uh, and uh, here we can already see different reasons players ascribe loss to. So really, this should be called attribution bingo. Um, and as in other contexts in life, um, League of Legends players have a set of different causes that they can attribute failure to. So maybe it's toxic teammates. Maybe it's lag. Obviously, that's what happens to me all the time when I lose. Um, Maybe it's not having farmed enough. Maybe it's uh, poor decision making. Or maybe it's a general inability to work in teams. And what attribution theory suggests is that how I attribute my failure or success in a game is going to affect me. How competent or proud do I feel after victory? Or how motivated am I to endure failure and keep trying until I overcome a challenge? Now. Um, these are just a few examples, and they are very specific to League of Legends. So any other game would have a completely different set of uh, attribution bingo. Um, so instead of looking at the many, many different individual causes, attribution theory identifies the abstract relevant characteristics of all causes. So what do they have? What are the abstract properties of these causes? What is it about them that affects us? And attribution theory uh, suggests three abstract dimensions that can be used to describe any cause we can attribute something to. So the first dimension is internality, or sometimes called locus of control by uh, Bernhard Weiner, for example. And internality describes whether a cause for an event lies within me or outside of me. So if we look at the different causes we've discussed, we can uh, separate them into causes that are internal, like poor decisions, or external, like toxic teammates. Or for example, we've heard this in the previous talk, did I choose this difficulty or was this difficulty imposed on me? Um, the second dimension is causal stability or causal permanence. So again, we can separate the causes mentioned. Is the cause stable over time, like a general ability uh, to work in teams, which is not gonna change in the next game or the next game? Or maybe is it unstable, like a poor matchup, and the matchmaking in League of Legends is going to be different every time, so it's clearly an unstable cause. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, no, anyway. Um, controllability describes the extent to which I can volitionally alter a cause. So we can distinguish causes by being controllable, how much effort I invest into farming, or uncontrollable, like lag, and again, I only ever lose at League of Legends because lag just messes up my amazing skill. Um, and uh, causal globality finally describes whether the cause for an achievement is important in all aspects of my life or if it's specific to a situation or a circumstance. So some causes may be specific to one instance of a game, like playing with an uh, unknown champion, while others may affect my performance in all games or even other areas of my life, like poor reaction time. 
So these dimensions have been shown to be valuable in understanding how people react to achievements. For example, feelings of pride and competence after success are predicated by an internal attribution. A defeatist attitude after failure is predicated on the belief that whatever caused my defeat is stable over time. Tenacity, the resistance to endure failure until a challenge is overcome, requires a player to believe that they have control over whatever caused their failure. So attribution theory can help us understand how players experience uh, success and failures in games. The problem is we currently have no means to measure player attribution. So drawing from literature on motivational psychology, we can assume that player attribution is predictive of player experience and player motivation, but we don't have any way to investigate these relationships. To, to address this problem, we created the game-specific attribution questionnaire and the tool measures player, uh, how players attribute their performance in a game session. Now, uh, the process of creating a scale is uh, very long and not very interesting to report, so I will go very briefly touch on the individual steps uh, that we went through. Uh, if you feel like you have to check your emails, now is the time. If you're really interested in this, all the details are in the paper or come find me after the talk. So, how do you create a scale for uh, player attribution? First, uh, we created and refined an item pool. So the items we created uh, were created by a team of game user researchers. The item creation was informed by interviews with experienced game, uh, gamers, as well as literature on attribution. The initial item pool we created consisted of 43 items. We then had a separate set of participants go through the items to identify phrasing issues or ambiguities. And we also had them perform a sorting task to confirm that the items clustered around our four hypothesized dimensions. And based on the feedback, we rephrased and refined the initial item set. The next step was to gather a large data set. So we asked 211 participants to play one of two games, a match three alignment game and a whack-a-mole game. Participants filled out our uh, player attribution items, and additionally we measured uh, player personality as well as pre-existing pre player experience measurements like the PENS or the IMI. Uh, based on the data we had collected, we were then able to make assertions about the item quality. So we first performed a preliminary assessment where we excluded poorly performing items based on extreme means, limited variance, low squared multiple correlations, and low item whole correlations. An exploratory factor analysis helped us to further identify items that could be removed based on psychometric grounds, so items with low fa factor loadings or low squared multiple correlations. We also excluded items based on theoretical grounds. For example, items that were similar in phrasing to better performing items were excluded. Finally, we used structural equation modeling to test the model fit for the remaining 13 items in a confirmatory factor analysis. Following Hu and Bentler, we used a set of metrics to assess the model fit, all of which indicate that the measurement model for our game-specific attribution questionnaire shows a very good fit with our data. Um, we want our questionnaire to work in different kinds of games, so we, we tested for invariance between the two games we used. We first established that both games individually had a good measurement model fit, um, proving configural invariance. Uh, we further performed a multi-group moderation test in Amos to establish that our scale is also metrically invariant over different games. A scale has to be internally consistent, so we confirmed reliability use, uh, of the subscales using composite reliability in Cronbus Alpha. Convergent validity indicates that items measuring one factor are strongly related to one another, uh, supporting this idea that they are conceptually measuring the same latent construct and we confirmed convergent validity using average variance extracted of each of the subscales. Discriminant validity expresses the idea that two constructs are in fact distinct. Um, this can be established comp by comparing the maximum shared variance with the average variance extracted. Uh, we can see that discriminant validity is generally good. Literature and attribution suggests that internality and controllability are deeply confounded, and we can see this in our data as well. And finally, to demonstrate criterion-related validity, uh, we show that the game-specific questionnaire, attribution questionnaire is associated with player personality as well as pre-existing uh, player experience measurements. Uh, so again, for more information, please look into the paper or come find me after the talk. What I want you to take away from this is uh, that the game-specific attribution questionnaire is a reliable and valid tool consisting of 13 items rated on a seven-point Likert scale, and you can find the scale in the paper if you want to use it in your research. So, um, I'm just gonna have a sip of water, sorry. Um, 
So far, we've explained what attribution theory is. We've explored the idea that attribution also happens in games. And we've presented a tool game user researchers can use to measure player attribution. In the following, we would like to give you two examples where looking at player experience through the lens of attribution theory helped game user researchers understand player motivation. So uh, um, one big debate right now, both in academia and in the realm of the internet, is difficulty in games. We just heard a talk about difficulty. In fact, there is an entire session on Wednesday on difficulty and challenge in games. Um, so in academia, this is a big debate, but also, uh, also on the internet. And uh, one of the very interesting questions is, um, why are really hard games engaging? And interestingly, some really hard games are engaging, while others just feel punishing and frustrating. So uh, from, a, from a game design perspective, it's a very interesting question to ask how are these two games different from, from each other, or how are these two genres of games, and uh, what is it that players experience that makes uh, one, one game pleasurable while the other one is just frustrating and they stop playing it. And interestingly, a lot of the explanations people come up with already allude at player attribution. So um, one of the quotes I found was, every time I die, I feel like I can do better next time. And this is indicative of an internal and controllable attribution of failure. And actually, there's, I just want to give a shout out. On Wednesday in the session, there's a research group from Basel who did an amazing study on um, Sky, oh, not Skyrim, uh, Dark Souls, the game when you talk about difficulty. And uh, a lot of the quotes that they found from their participants uh, also in the background already talk about player attribution. So I strongly recommend that talk. So um, we can kind of see that, that how difficult it is perceived kind of depends on how I attribute failure. And here, I just want to uh, reference the last talk. I talk about failure, uh, so I'm not I'm, I am confounding those two things that you talked about earlier. Um, so a recent study investigated in-game and at-game frustration. And uh, not surprisingly, the results found that at-game frustration is detrimental to player experience, while in-game frustration can be engaging. But more importantly, the results show that at-game frustration stems from an external attribution of failure, whereas in-game frustration is predicated by an internal attribution of failure. So this is another example where attribution frameworks can help us understand how to design failure in an engaging way. Another example is dynamic difficulty adjustment. Um, so, uh, um, what research on attribution actually, actually suggests is that uh, we're really irrational at assigning causes to events. So you maybe you have uh, observed this coming back to the rejection of the papers. Rejected papers often get rejected because the review system is totally random. And really, if you think about it, it's a crapshoot. So don't worry about it. Your paper is amazing. But when a paper gets accepted, it's because you're awesome. <laughs> And it's brilliant, and the contribution is there, and it has nothing to do with randomness. So uh, self-serving attribution biases are tendencies we have to attribute failure external and uncontrollable, and success internal and controllable, regardless of truth, quote unquote. Um, so this knowledge can inform our understanding of how players experience games. So there's a large body of research looking at dynamic difficulty uh, adjustments that uses assistance techniques to help novices and disabled players to perform better in games. And the assumption has always been that success achieved by assistance would be problematic because uh, players would attribute uh, success in the context of assistance externally, leading to a um, detrimental player experience. However, a recent study showed that players are actually very willing to attribute success in games to themselves despite knowing that they were being heavily assisted. So this is uh, very coherent with what we already know from attribution theory about self-serving attribution biases. Okay, so these are just two examples where player attribution can help us understand player experience. Using the game-specific attribution questionnaire, we now have a tool to investigate how player attribution affects player player experience and motivation. So what I want you to take away from this is that attribution theory can help us understand player experience. And in this paper, we created the game-specific attribution questionnaire as a reliable and valid tool to investigate player attribution. Thank you.
Sure. No problem. Um, yes, so that's, uh, that's already, your hypothesis has already been uh, um, established in, in contexts like academia, for example. Um, um, and I think that the relevant factor here is controllability. And controllability alludes to this idea of responsibility. So if I think whatever caused my success or failure is in my control, then I feel responsible for this. And that hurts on the one hand, but it also leads me to work on myself. So I think in terms of player um, progression and skill development, I think uh, a propensity towards attributing failure controllably definitely correlates with, uh, with um, player progression. I don't know, I hope that was your question. I just kind of went with that, yeah? Um, cool, okay. Hey, <clears throat> Heather Knight, why do you think your paper got in? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Why do you think your paper got in? Why do I think, well, uh, oh. <laughs> you got me in a box here. Um, I think uh, hard work, <laughs> a little bit of randomness, and uh, I don't know, yeah. I'm not gonna, not gonna go into this. Um, <laughs> good question, though. Yeah. Sure. So I'm just wondering if you have what kind of player attribution the more the online community perspective. Say, for example, like Dark Souls are and but there's a not you know super bad about it. It's like they know the community, know they can acknowledge this part, and the community is like very supportive of it. We're like in or in, in MoMA say like in, in Dota, people say like if you don't get 5,000 anymore, you're just like, so have you just like ever thought about this? Um, I think, um, I think the support network in Dark Souls adds to controllability, especially uh, in synergy with the game mechanics that Dark Souls employs. So if I constantly die at one specific boss, I can just go online and watch a YouTube video of how to defeat that boss, uh, and that gives me control. And I think in, a, in an online community, there, you're adding the social component to it, with it, which is incredibly interesting, because uh, what, what research on attribution in social context suggests is that we're much more likely to um, flame on other people and to uh, react antisocially to other people if we feel like their bad performance is controllable by them. So again, controllability here is, is, is predicting if I think you're a bad player but it's not your fault, then I'm more likely to uh, engage with you pro-socially and help you. But if I think that you're screwing up because you're not trying hard enough, then I am very likely to act antisocially and behave in a toxic manner. So I think uh, our, we have ideas about our, our own failures and successes, but we also have ideas about other people's failures and successes. And if I think you lose, even though you have control over it, I might, that, that's gonna increase the chance to be aggressive. And I think so, in this context, attribution theory can, could, could help us look at toxicity in games. There's a part of this in the paper if you're interested. I hope that was your question. Uh, I hope that was helpful. Yeah, sorry. Okay, bing. Uh, thank you very much.